Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. They were sacrificing babies to Moloch, having perverted uh, you know what parties where people forgot who they was married to to honor Baal so they could produce little bastard children to murder on the altar of Moloch. You think this is anything new? Can you imagine these poor Old Testament saints had to look at all this filth and wickedness without the precious hope of Jesus Christ that they didn't even know? They, I can't even imagine. I don't, I don't even want to park it right. Hey, I said enough. I don't even want to park it right there and preach a while because it's so straight out of hell. It's just like the Democrats. Just like the baby killing. Just like the drag queen story hour. Just like... Uh, Chris Long, just like the Vatican, it's straight out of hell. Hey, Isaiah prophesied the virgin birth at the cross, the sinless life of Christ, and the resurrection. And praise God, he prophesied he's coming back. Hallelujah. Hey. Moses testified of a great prophet to come. God told David, that, that his kingdom was going to last forever. Ooh, what does that even mean? Is that is that that is that that those Christ deniers sitting over there in Jerusalem right now? No. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is coming back to rule with a rod of iron. He's going to take down the star of Red Fan. He's going to take it down, and he's going to tell Satan to take it to hell with him. And he's going to uh, uh, lift up a new instant like Isaiah talks about. The cross! At the cross! At the cross! When I first saw the light! Hallelujah! We as Christians take so much for granted. <clears throat> hey, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee for a minute. Because I just got done. <laughs> I've been trying to take the drugs to church. I'm losing my voice already. Okay, Rubio. <laughs> the following message has been brought to you by Independent Baptist Church of Tampa Bay. BaptistTampaBay.com You know what? We're going to be up out of here before too long. We're going to be with Jesus. And that's not necessarily anything to look forward to because we're going to be judged based off of our works. I'm not looking forward to the judgment seat. When was I mm, having corrupt conversation when I could have been exhorting the brethren? When was I being selfish when I could have been when I could have let Christ make me strong for somebody else? That's something to think about. I mean, every single work is going to be judged. Our sins aren't going to be judged. Our works are going to be judged. And you know what? That's when those sins of omission come in. But you know what? <laughs> I praise God we got a King James Bible that talks about redeeming the time. Amen. I want to redeem the time to pull some souls out of hell. Hallelujah. How are we going to do it? Who's going to do it? He that winneth souls is wise. We can win them, but we're not saving them. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you think you, you pe these idiots think they get a rush out of at a full ball? Oh, we won, we won. You know that fool on the football field doesn't care about you. You're a sucker. You know what? He won the football game. You didn't. He gets the glory. You don't. You're just a sucker living vicariously through somebody else. But when you lead somebody to Christ, you didn't save them, but you won. Amen. Hallelujah. So first, we ought to just get into our text. Man, people are getting saved. Let's let the drunks hear about that. Amen. I thank God. That I came from a family of drunks. But did he look down on me when I was six years old? And he plucked me out of fire. And he saved my soul. And instead of getting filled up with wicked liquor, I'm getting filled up with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Are we telling the drunks tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I just... Hey, you see why you see why God told me to buy a cinder block? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 
verse 10 of, of 1 Peter 1. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, unto you, unto you, okay? Now, there were Old Testament saints, and there are New Testament saints. There, those Old Testament saints were friends of the bridegroom. Hey, but 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 where the bride? But where the bride? And Jesus is the bridegroom. They, hey, hey, they had to watch from afar. They had to put a mask over their face, and they had to watch through a foggy internet connection, and they couldn't hear everything. They didn't get to come into church because there was a lockdown. They didn't get to see everything in its fullness. But we get to see everything in its fullness. Isaiah, I mean, I can't even imagine Isaiah sitting there writing down everything God showed him about Christ. And he still was looking through a veil. We got more than Isaiah. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> it's all open. You know, it's interesting. The prophets asked God, tell me more, tell me more, but he didn't tell them more. You see, they searched diligently, but they didn't find it. You see, I mean, all they had was the blood of bulls and goats to foretell Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ was crucified from the foundations of the earth. You see, that they, they, they looked forward to Christ through a veil, but they didn't even get to enjoy the treasures of it. Even the Trinity was hidden in plain sight. You see? I mean, just, just think about this for a minute. Just think about this for a minute. I mean, if people like to say that, oh, well, that, oh, this was, that was written to the Jews. This is written to the Jews. That was written to the Jews. All Scripture is given by God. Uh, 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 all Scripture is given by God. Uh, uh, it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly finished unto all good works. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> that's talking to us. That's that, that's that Timothy right there. You see that 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 pastor, that young preacher boy being sent out by Paul, praise God. Hallelujah. Man, I love it right there. So I just want to get that out of the way there. And then also the pro who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. That's talking to us. That's talking to the Christians. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were beneficiaries of that grace. They didn't even get to see it. I mean, they just had to trust in very little. Man, I mean, you know, as bad as things are getting right now, you know, my Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. They were sacrificing babies to Moloch. They were having perverted, uh, you know what, parties where people forgot who they was married to to honor Baal. So they could produce little bastard children to murder on the altar of Moloch. You think this is you think this is anything new? No. Can you imagine these poor Old Testament saints had to look at all this filth and all this foolishness and all this wickedness without the precious hope of Jesus Christ that they didn't even know? They I can't even imagine. I don't, I don't even want to park it right. Hey, I said enough. I don't even want to park it right there and preach a while because it's so straight out of hell. It's just like the Democrats. Just like the baby killing. Just like the drag queen story hour. Just like uh, Chris Long. Just like the Vatican. It's straight out of hell. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. They searched. They couldn't find it. What manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. You see, we as Christians take so much for granted. <clears throat> hey, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee for a minute. Because I just got done... <laughs> I've been trying to take the drunks to church. I'm losing my voice already. Hey, Rubio. <laughs> hey, so I'm going to tell you something right now. We're spoiled. 
You don't have a right to complain about living in this, even in this post new, t- even in this post local church age. You know where we're not, where all we got to look forward to is the blessed hope. Literally, all we have to look forward to is the blessed hope. We don't have a right to complain. When Jesus Christ went up to heaven, he left behind a comforter for the apostles that through the preaching of the word of God that they were able to share the Holy Ghost with anybody who believed that was born again by faith alone. The Holy Ghost stays inside of us. In the Old Testament, whenever the the Holy Ghost came on somebody, the Holy Ghost would come and go, come and go. I mean, the Holy Ghost would come on David, left David. Come on David, left David. They'd come on the prophets and leave the prophets. They'd come on Samson, they left Samson. They came on Samson again just long enough uh, to tear down the... uh, what was that tribe he killed again? They were all straight out of hell. Whatever. The Midianites. Oh, Midian. So he killed the Midianites. You know, the Holy Ghost came on him just long enough for him to die with all the Midianites. <laughs> hey, we don't have a right to complain. Uh, uh, the same spirit that was in Christ is in us. The, the, the glory of God abides inside of us. Uh, whenever the light departed from the temple, when Christ died, that light abides inside of us. We have to put under our flesh daily to let our light shine. we got to put the sin out of our lives and the corrupt conversation out of our minds and our hearts so that we can have uh, the, the light inside of us shining and illuminating us ourselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. And by the way, hey, you don't think these Old Testament saints testified of Christ? Hey, 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 hey. I want to tell you something. In the garden, in the garden, God said that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. That was Jesus. No other seed of woman. Everybody else is seed of man. Hey, in the Old Testament, Isaiah prophesied the virgin birth, prophesied the cross, prophesied the sinless life of Christ prophesied the resurrection and praise God he prophesied he's coming back hallelujah Moses testified of a great prophet to come God told David that that his kingdom was going to last forever what does that even mean Is is that that is that that those Christ deniers sitting over there in Jerusalem right now no Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is coming back to rule with the rod of iron. He's going to take down the star of Red Fan. He's going to take it down. And he's going to tell Satan to take it to hell with him. And he's going to uh, uh, lift up a new instant like Isaiah talks about. The cross. At the cross. At the cross. When I first saw the light. Hallelujah! You know the Confederate flag is a cross? I like that. That'll preach. Hallelujah! The Lion of Judah is coming back to rule with the rod of iron. The south shall rise again. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you sit in sin. Well, we all turn out with a rebel shout because the south shall rise again. Hallelujah! He's going to take us out of the grave. Hallelujah! Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson ain't going to be left in the grave. Well, Albert Pike will be left in the grave, but... <laughs> Hallelujah! Man, you, you, you think that Robert E. Lee statue's good? Just wait till you get to see him when you're called up with him and praise God. He's gonna, all he's going to be able to tell you is, Jesus saved my soul! Hallelujah! Woo! Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to throw this out there. There are are three groups of people that are protected by angels. Children, nations, and Christians. Heirs of salvation. What's that? Heirs of salvation. Heirs of salvation. The angels are heirs of salvation. The angels who didn't follow Satan in his 
in his insurrection or heirs of salvation. They're sons of God. They're still sons of God. They didn't fall down and, and fornicate with a bunch of women because they became demons and possessed wicked people. Praise God, the angels that persevered are here to protect us and we can't even count them. There's too many. Praise God that uh, we don't, we, even though we have to worry about the little stuff, even though we have to get the sin out of our lives, even though we have to share the gospel, praise God. God, he's got the big stuff taken care of. Man, we got an army of angels behind us. You think Satan's got any hold on us? We're charging the gates of hell. Hallelujah. For, do not fear. Hallelujah. But I want to zero in on something else here. It says about how they, they, they revealed the mysteries of Christ not unto themselves. They preached Christ. But they didn't reveal the mysteries to Christ. Jesus Christ is the blood of the Lamb that was shed from the foundations of the earth. He made a promise and it was, and it was guaranteed. Jesus Christ could not have failed. Jesus Christ could not lie. He promised He was going to do it. And He done did it. And He's coming back. Hallelujah. He's the scapegoat. You see, all those sins that people get away with, nobody really got away with them. But I want to tell you something. All those sins that we don't remember, uh, uh, that, that, that we can't even begin to apologize to God for, apologize to the, our neighbor for, apologize to our brethren for, uh, in the eyes of God, they're forgiven because Jesus Christ is also the scapegoat. That <laughs> Man, praise God. He's also the brazen serpent that was lifted up and became sin for us so that we may live. Hey, they didn't even... <laughs> can you imagine these old brethren in the, in the church in the... Hey, I said the church in the wilderness. I didn't say the synagogue in the wilderness. I didn't say uh, uh, the Christian center in the wilderness. I didn't say the ecclesia on the rock in the wilderness. I didn't say uh, the chapel in the wilderness. Bless God, I see the church in the wilderness. Hallelujah for church. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and next week we're going to be talking about living out that love of Christ and letting our light shine and how that looks. But let's go ahead and finish this point that Peter's making in verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He's perfect. There is no good in us. There is none good but God. Our own righteousness is but filthy rags before the Lord. There is none righteous. No, not one. No, not one. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ lowered himself. He put on the flesh. He lived that perfect sinless life. He died for us. By his red blood, we are cast white as snow. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're saved today? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And another word for times is years. You know, hey, in these last few years, God revealed that Jesus Christ, who was foreordained, was going to die for you. It was testified from the foundations of the earth. It was it was set in heaven before it ever happened. The precious blood of Christ. He was foreordained. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, I, I, sometimes you get so puffed up in yourself and you get so tied up in your theology and everything, you, you totally forget how to talk to sinners. You know that? Praise God for Brother Tony at Amazing Grace. You know, he was, he was showing me this and he was showing me his soul winning presentation. And he asked me, Who, who's, whosoever? And I got confused. I said, whosoever? And he's like, no, no, no. Who, who is whosoever? I know what whosoever means. It's so natural to me, I can't even explain it. I couldn't answer. He's like, that means anybody. Hey, don't you praise God that he died for any, that, that, that anybody whosoever sinner like us, amen? 
Amen, amen, hallelujah. Whosoever. What's that? Whosoever. Whosoever, praise God. Man, I... I <laughs> God, help us if we ever get over what he done for us at the cross. God, help us if we ever lose our zeal for souls. You know the greatest thing, the most joyous event that you can ever go through is just seeing a new baby being born into the family, holding the newborn baby, all that joy. And even though Mama had to go through something horrible, hey, I mean, what difference did it make to us? She screams all the time anyway. We didn't know any difference. But praise God for a newborn baby. I mean, hey, I mean, a preacher's the same way. I mean, a preacher screams all the time anyway, too. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be self-righteous about any of this. But I mean, uh, praise God for the newborn babes in Christ. We, we, we're not supposed uh, uh, to be impatient and expect too much out of the newborn babes. They're newborn babes. Hallelujah. We love the chance to teach them the doctrines, to guide them in the spiritual truths, to be able to teach them the hard truths that we learned the hard way so they don't have to do it. Hallelujah for newborn babes. Hallelujah for souls getting saved. Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory... Amen. That your faith and hope might be in God. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. Oh man, I just had to repeat that over again. Man, the Holy Ghost right, came just as he came in at the baptism of John the Baptist. That light, the glory of God, that's the, the glory of God is the light of God. That's the Holy Ghost. He illuminated Christ to get up out of the grave. Jesus Christ got up out of the grave. The tomb is empty. Amen. We don't... I'm going to tell you something. I could shout the glory all day even if I just knew I wasn't going to hell. But we're going to heaven. Hallelujah. His tomb is empty. Uh, the rapture is just as much gospel as, uh, as is the, 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 the tomb is empty. Praise God. Hey, that's 1 Corinthians 15. You can lock that, lump that, bump that, jump that, or take that across the street and dump that. But if you do take it across the street and dump that, you are going to get right with God because you are rejecting the gospel. Hey, man, right there. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. You know, there are two the law can be summed up in two commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. Love Christ above everything. You can't love your neighbor right if you don't love Christ above everything. And you, you love your neighbor. Love your neighbor goes right along with loving the brethren. You know why? Who's your neighbor? Your neighbor is the person, uh, uh, even if you're a Samaritan and it's a Jew that hates you, your neighbor is that Jew in the ditch who's been, who's been abandoned by all the other Jews. Your neighbor is the Samaritan that, that helps you out even though you're a Jew and done been abandoned by all the other Jews. We're supposed to help the downtrodden Jesus Christ came not for the healthy, but for those who are sick, the great physician. He came not to draw the righteous, but to draw sinners to repentance. Hallelujah. You see, we're supposed to go out. We, just, we don't have to tell these sinners that they're sinners. Hey, hey, I want to tell you something. You don't need to get drunk and wash away your sorrows in the, uh, in the bottle with wicked liquor. Praise God. You've got a Savior who will wipe away your tears. You don't have to get high on wicked marijuana. Praise God. you got a perfect Savior who's going to take you high as heaven. Praise God. He's coming back. You don't have, you don't have to find company and fellowship and companionship through whoremongering. Praise God. You can be the bride of Christ and, and have that comforter inside you who's never going to leave you. Praise God. 
You see, well, there, there can be no sin in heaven. There can be no unrighteousness in heaven. You see, uh, uh, any, anybody who's born of the Spirit cannot sin. Because if you sin and you're abiding in the flesh, but when you're abiding in the Spirit, you ain't going to sin. You see, He washed your soul. He washed your soul clean. Your soul can never... Your spirit, your spirit can be quenched. Your flesh can be indulged. But praise God, your soul can never again be dirty because that's what's going up to heaven. Praise God. Amen. You see, He purified your souls. You were born again into the family of God. You're born again and is a new creature in Christ. Amen. He purified your soul, praise God. You, well, how did you do it? You obeyed the truth. You believed that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin according to the Scriptures. He lived that perfect sinless life according to the Scriptures. He died a criminal's death as, in, uh, as a perfect innocent man to pay our criminal's debt of sin and hell. He rose again on the third day to defeat death for us. He went to heaven uh, to prepare a place for us according to the Scriptures. And He's coming back to rule with the rod of iron and we're coming back with Him to rule with Him according to our works. According to the Scriptures. Man, that's good right there. That's good. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brother Peter. That's good preaching. I thank mm -hmm. you for that. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. You know what? The heart is wicked. Your heart will deceive you. You have to speak the truth before you can speak the truth in love. If you love somebody who's lost, you've got to tell them that they're going to hell and that you love them so much that you've got to offend them to, so they can get saved because faith, come, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As it goes on, we'll talk about that next week. Because, oh wait, being born again, not of corruptible seed, NIV. Hey, help me! Help me! Being born again, not of corruptible seed, NIV, ESV, NLT, MEV, NKJV, The Message, Dewey Rhymes, Kenneth Copeland, Lying signs and wonders straight out of hell, but of incorruptible seed. The King James Bible is inspired. It's infallible. It's indestructible. It's preserved. It's perfect. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth in a Bible forever. Hey! You didn't think God didn't know that the so-called originals were going to pass away? You didn't think God didn't know that the manuscript evidence that the King James translators used to give us a perfect Bible by the providential inspiration of God would be destroyed in the London fires of 1868 and that all we'd have is the King James Bible? You think God didn't know that from the beginning? You're crippled too high for crutches. His word is settled in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. His word is settled in heaven. And by the way, about that, you know, John MacArthur says that these, these modern Alexandrian straight out of hell Catholic manuscripts and these little fragments, pieces of paper that nobody knows what's on them, but they, but they make something up. <laughs> like they draw a little piece of paper what they think it should say on the rest of the page. John MacArthur, straight out of hell, calls those an embarrassment of riches. Hey, John MacArthur, my riches are in Christ. And you are an embarrassment because you are attacking 